In this video, we're in Google Sheets, and I'm going to show you how to format an entire row based on a value somewhere on your sheet. So in this demo sheet, I've got a list of names. If I select a name, it highlights the entire row or rows that relate to that particular sales rep. I'm gonna show you how to do this for text values, numeric values, dates, and also based on whether a cell is empty or not. I'll leave a table of contents down in the description of this video. Now in our first example, we're gonna base our formatting on a text value, the sales rep name that appears up here. To create this type of conditional formatting, we have to use a formula, or to be more precise, a logical test. Let me give you an example. Over in H5, I'm gonna write a logical test that's going to look at this cell here, B5, and see if that name equals the name I have up in A2. So what I do is I say equals this sales rep name here equals this sales rep name in A2. And if I press enter, I get a true. Now in order to copy this logical test down the rest of this column, what I need to do is fix my reference to A2. So I'm always comparing these sales rep names with the name in A2. Now to fix the reference to A2, I click somewhere in that cell reference and I press the F4 key at the top of my keyboard. And you can see that puts dollars before the A and before the two of that cell reference. Now if F4 didn't work for you, you can type the dollars directly in. I copy this down. You can see I get a true wherever there's a match between the name in column B and the name in cell A2. Now, in order for the conditional formatting to apply format to an entire row, I need true not only in the sales rep column, but in the other columns, the date column, the product column, the quantity column, and the price column. Now, if I copy this to the left, let's see if we get true. Now, I don't get true. I get true for the sales rep column, but not for the date column. Let's see why. And you can see what it's doing is it's now comparing the value in the date column with the name that I have in A2. Well, what I would want to do for the date column is actually compare the sales rep name for that row with the value in A2. Now to sort this out, I need to go back to my original sales rep logical test and I need to partially fix my B5 reference. I actually only need to put a dollar in front of the B because my logical test is always going to compare the value in column B with the value in A2. Now, if I press F4 once, twice, three times, can you see it puts a dollar in front of the B? Again, if F4 is not working for you, you can just type the dollar in in that position. Right, so now I'm going to copy across. You can see I get a true. And if I copy across these other columns, you see I get a true for the whole row. Copy down. And if I look further on down my table, I've got another daily abridger. And indeed, I get trues all across that row. Now I'm creating this table just to demonstrate how these logical tests work with these dollars. You don't have to create this table. I'm doing it more as a teaching tool for you. But once we have our formula, which we have, you need to copy it. Now, once you've copied that formula, you then need to select the data that you're going to apply the conditional formatting to. And the first cell you select has to correspond to the formula that you've copied. So I copied this formula up here, so I need to select from this cell down. If you did happen to select from the bottom up, then the formula you'd need to copy be this one down here. But normally you select from the top left corner down to the bottom right hand corner. So with the cell selected, I go to format, then to conditional formatting. Over on the right here, you can see the range of cells that the conditional formatting is going to apply to. Format rules, I need to change this to custom formula is, and that's right at the bottom of that menu there. And then in this box, value or formula, you paste in, control V, your formula. 
and it gives you that green background by default, but you can change that. If I wanted to change it to blue, that's nice and easy. And then you just click on done. So I can change the name up here. So I'll change it to Zana and more. And you can see it highlights the relevant rows. Now in my demo file, I had a drop down list here. I'll show you how to create that. Let's close down this conditional formatting rules task pane. First of all, what I need is a list of all the unique names in this column. Now to get that, I'm going to copy the names in this column, control C, paste them over here. And with those cells selected, I'm going to go to data, data cleanup, remove duplicates, remove duplicates, click on OK. Now we won't worry about the conditional formatting that's applied to that column because we're going to hide that column in a minute. So now I've got my unique list of names. I click into the cell where I want the drop down. I go to data, data validation, cell range, text A2, that's where I want my drop down list, criteria, list from range. Then what I do in this box where it says enter a range of formula, as I click on this little select data range button, and I select my unique names, click on OK, click on Save. And now I have a drop down list of names and the conditional formatting responds accordingly. Now, how do I hide this column? Well, what I can do is right click up on the end there, go to hide column. OK, let's move on to the next example. In this example, I want to highlight rows based on the brand name. Now the difficulty here is that the brand name is found within the product name. It's always the first part of the product name. So I can't just say, does the product name equal the brand name? Because that, that will never work. Now the way around this is to use the find function. So again, I'm going to start over here by creating a logical test starting off with the find function and find finds the first position of string found in text. So search for the brand that I've got selected in A2. I'm going to need to lock that and I'm doing that with the F4 key, comma, text to search. Well, I'm going to be searching in this first product name. Now, if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see that it returns value. Well, let's copy this down. Now, wherever it does find this brand name, it returns the position, position one. As I said, the brand name is always at the beginning of the product name. Now, we're not really interested in the position as such, but we are interested in the fact that it's returned a number. If it's returned a number, the number one, then we know that that product belongs to the brand that we've selected up here. So remember, we need a logical test. What I need to do is return true if this find function returns a number. And we can do that using the isNumber function. isNumber returns true if your value is a number. I've closed the bracket at the end there, press enter, copy it down. And you can see now that I get either trues or falses. Now, because we want to apply the conditional formatting to a whole row, I do need to be able to copy this formula across all of these columns. So don't forget what you've got to do. You've got to partially lock your reference to C5. And I need to do that in column because all the product names are in column C. So I'm pressing F4 once, twice, three times. And again, if F4 doesn't work, type the dollar in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it across this row and then down all the rows. And I can see now that wherever I've got a basics product, I get true across the entire row within these workings. Now I'm going to copy this formula. Select all the cells that I want to apply conditional formatting to. Format, conditional formatting, format cells if, right at the bottom, custom formula is, paste your formula in here. If you want to change the color, click on done. 
does it work let's see city kitchen yes it does j oliver okay let's move on to the next example now we're going to look at formatting rows based on a numeric criteria to start off with this is pretty similar to comparing values to text values we've got a quantity of two up here highlight all rows where the quantity is two well i'd write my little formula up here does this value here equal this value up here i need to put my dollars in so a2 would be locked on column and row, but D5 would only be locked on column. So I can copy that across the rest of this row and then down. And you can see I get a true wherever the quantity is equal to two. Let's take this formula, copy, select the cells I want to apply the conditional formatting to, format, Conditional formatting, format cells if, custom formula is, paste your formula in, and let's change the color there. Now, if I wanted to format cells with a quantity greater or equal to two, then all I would need to do is put that greater than comparison operator in there, and you can see it now highlights the relevant rows if I wanted to say less than, I just put my less than symbol in, or you could say less than and equal to. Done, and let's move on to the next example, between two numbers. So I've got a lower threshold and an upper threshold, and we're basing this on price. Now this is slightly more evolved because we've got two criteria, and to apply two criteria, both of which need to be true, we can use the AND function. So I'm going to say AND is this price greater than or equal to the lower threshold, comma, and then the second test is, is this price less than or equal to the upper threshold? Close the bracket, press enter. Now I do need to do some locking here. so. The A2 reference needs to be locked and the B2 reference needs to be locked. E5 needs to be locked on column, both instances. Now if I copy that across and down. So where I've got trues, the value is between 10 and 15. False for all the other rows. Take the formula, select the cells that I want to apply the conditional formatting to, format, conditional formatting, custom formula is, paste your formula in, change the color if you want to. Let's move on to the next example. Now on this one, we're basing our conditional formatting on today's date. Now I'm on the 2nd of January, 2022, so I'm expecting this row to be highlighted. Now we want this conditional formatting to remain up to date. So we need some way of storing today's date in our sheet in a way that updates automatically. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can either do it directly within your formula, within your logical test, or you can store today's date in a cell. Now, if we store it in a cell, let's store it in A2, the way we do that is just to write equals today, open bracket, close bracket. So we can then say equals, does this date here equal this date here, today's date? And obviously I need to fix that reference to A2 and partially fix the A5 reference, fix it on column. And I can copy that across, copy down. And you can see I get true results here for the 2nd of January. Now, an alternative way is to put the today function directly within your logical test. So rather than referring to A2, just say, does A5 equal today's date? If I copy that across, 
and down, we get the same results. So let's copy this formula. Select the cells I want to apply the conditional formatting to. Format, conditional formatting. Base it on a formula. Paste in your formula and change the color if you want to. Now, if you wanted to format based on dates in the past, then rather than saying equal to, you can just say less than today's date. If you want to format based on dates of the future, you could say greater than. Okay, we're done with that particular sheet. Let's move on to the final example. So in this example, we're looking at whether sales are empty. We're looking at the price column. We want to format sales where we do not have an empty cell in the price column. Now there's a number of ways we could do this. First method I'll show you uses is number. I could say, is there a numeric value in that cell? And if I copied this down, you see I get my trues and falses. So if you know your column's meant to contain a number, that might be a way forward. If it was text, you could use is text. I'm getting trues there. Say delete one of the products, then I get a false. Let's just delete these tests for the moment. I'll show you a third and final way. Now the third and final way uses a function called is blank. And that will return true if your cell reference is blank, false if it isn't. Now, that's actually the opposite to what we want. But to get your falses to become trues and your trues to become falses, you just use the not function. So I'm putting is blank within not. And that gives us the results that we're after. Now, for this formula to work, we do need to lock the column reference for E3. And then I should better copy this across and down to get my trues all the way across these rows. Then I can copy this formula and if I select the cells, format conditional formatting, format cell if, custom formula is, paste in my formula, change the color. You can see now that all of the records that contain a price are now highlighted. If you wanted the opposite, in other words, you want all the records that don't have a price to be highlighted, then you just knock out the not function. And it does the opposite for you. Okay, we're done. Thanks very much for listening. Hopefully that's been useful. If it is, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.